The topic of this video is determining the inverse of a function. Let's look at a problem. Consider the graph of the function f below. Create the graph of f inverse. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a really good look at this graph before we begin the problem. The first thing that I would like to point out is that the dark blue collection of line segments is our graph f of x. The lighter blue diagonal line with a slope of 1 through the origin is the line y equals x. y equals x is not officially part of the graph. It's simply there as a tool to help us identify the graph of f inverse, since a graph and its inverse are a reflection about the line y equals x. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin this problem. We know that if we want to find an inverse based on a provided graph, all we have to do is swap all of the x and y coordinates. Let's make a list of the collection of the x and y coordinates for the graph provided by listing all of the x's and y's that we know. For example, we know that this point, negative 5, negative 5, is on f of x. This point, negative 4, positive 1, is on the graph of f of x. This point, 1, 2, and this point, 2, 4, comprise all of the endpoints of the line segments on the graph of f of x. Now what we want to do is use this information to create the graph of f inverse of x. It will also have x and y coordinates, and we'll find them by swapping the x and y coordinates from f of x. So when we swap negative 5, negative 5, it turns out to be the same, negative 5, negative 5. When we swap negative 4, 1, we get 1, negative 4. 1, 2 becomes 2, 1. 2, 4 becomes 4, 2. So now we know four points that are on the graph of f inverse of x. Let's plot them. Negative 5, negative 5 is shown here. 1, negative 4 would be here. 2, 1 would be here. And 4, 2 would be here. Now, we need to find a way to create the entire graph not just those four points that we happen to know about. So, I'm going to use a teaching tool here. I've created a transparency of the graph of f of x and the line y equals x and the x and y axis. So you can see on this transparency that I have the graph. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to spin it around the line y equals x to get a sense of what f inverse must look like. All right, so here we go. Here is our graph. <clears throat> I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to spin it around the line y equals x, and then put it back on top of our diagram. And when I do that, and I line up the x-axis and the y-axis, this tells me how I should connect the four red dots that we've drawn to create the picture of f inverse of x. And it's a pretty simple idea. It looks like I just have to draw a straight line segment connecting point to point to point, which is exactly what the original graph looked like, a series of line segments connecting point to point to point. So I'll get out my straight edge, and I'll connect all of these dots together. So I have a line segment from here to here, I have a line segment from here to here, and I have a line segment from here to here. The red graph that I've just drawn is the graph of f inverse of x, and is the final answer to our question. The red graph is the final answer to our question.